why we ended up looking at Yucca Mountain in particular, that spot on the ground. The derailment came because of the Reed connection to the Obama administration. Okay. So, so Scott, welcome to Meet the Voter. And this is the really preamble to your talk on the 17th, the RMC at the Atlantis at 1130. I think the doors open. Okay. So thanks for coming. We appreciate uh, you coming. And you're going to be in opposition to Yucca Mountain, I understand? I'm going to be talking about the issues that are out there with Yucca Mountain as a repository. Yep. Now, you're a hydrologist, correct? Yep. My background is hydrology and mechanical engineering. Interesting combination. Mm -hmm. Very good. It is. It's all fluids. So what are your key points you're going to speak on? Well, I'll talk a couple of things. One is uh, a little bit about how we ended up at Yucca Mountain, why Yucca Mountain is our uh, was the proposed repository. And there's a long political story to that. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about why we ended up looking at Yucca Mountain in particular, that spot on the ground. And it's a story that I think people will be interested in because it didn't have to do with politics. It had to do with nuclear weapons testing. You know, I've done a little bit of reading. It's fascinating to go around and do these type of interviews. Mm -hmm. And I can see where you're coming from because they, that's all I read about was the uh, nuclear tests were there, and there were three or four sites, three sites, I believe. And then they created law, and they have to do something about our nuclear waste in some, to some extent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. And, and when, uh, the first, uh, when we really started first looking at Yucca Mountain as a repository site, as a place to dispose of, nuclear, of spent fuel from nuclear reactors, it looked pretty promising. I mean, it had some interesting things about it that were different than the other sites that had been talked about and also in Europe, other sites that people were looking at. So it had a lot of unique features. Um, the problem is some of those unique features came back to bite us in the butt because uh, we, and I say we, our community, the, the engineering and science community, we never really studied or knew anything about fractured rock in the, what's called the unsaturated zone, so above the water table. We didn't bother to study it. It wasn't interesting. It doesn't produce water. It doesn't produce minerals. So Yucca Mountain was the first, really the first time that people started to look at this kind of rock mass and understand how does water move through it? How, what kind of geochemical reactions are going to occur there? And uh, would it be suitable for waste disposal? When did you first get interested in Yucca Mountain? Oh, I graduated from, my, got my master's degree in the early 80s. And uh, immediately went to work for Battelle National Laboratory up in Hanford, Washington, which is the site right. of uh, the, most of the plutonium production for the U.S. And so I was involved with nuclear waste management kind of from the get-go once I finished my master's degree. So what year was that? That was 1980, ooh, I have to think back, 82, which was just about the first time one of the first nuclear waste acts was passed. And we started looking at a variety of sites. I think at that point there might have been nine sites. So you go way back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'd be an interesting. We do a timeline interview. I should have done a timeline interview. That's sure. where we do yeah. your personal history and sure. background. Okay. So after that, in 82, when did you, how did you end up in Reno? Uh, well, I ended up actually in Las Vegas. So in 1985, okay. I think it was, the Desert Research Institute and was funded by the state of Nevada to have a parallel analysis program for Yucca Mountain. And so DRI, we had a grant to look at uh, this, the various hydrology down there. And I took the job. At that point, too, I said it's time to do a PhD, so I moved back up here to Reno to do my PhD at, at UNR and kept working on it. Wow. And, and then moved off from Yucca Mountain and started a, quite a bit of work on the Nevada test site. Uh, so much of the waste management from nuclear testing, not from nuclear waste, not from spent fuel. Is that Area 51? No, no, no. Is this that, is uh, all the various that, testing areas that are on the Nevada area. test 51 site. 51 is small. And yeah, big and 50, area. area 51 is not controlled by the... Right, uh, Department of Energy, it's I think. It's only like six, it's very small. Yeah, it's a small area, and it's north of where all the nuclear testing was. Oh, really? It's yeah. actually north of it. North and east, I believe, yeah. Yeah, I've driven by and sort of skirted the area, yeah. so. Yeah, Interesting. You have a very interesting background, so I'm looking forward to the 17th, to your uh, positions and opinions. You have a long background in this. I, I do, and I've watched the, pro the project at Yucca Mountain evolve over time, and then in our work that we did on the Nevada test site, so again, kind of t think of the two separately, Yucca Mountain, while part of it is on the Nevada test site, the Nevada test site has its, all its own issues. It has the most radioactive contaminated material in the country, mostly because of the nuclear testing. Um, and so we've done a lot of work on looking at waste disposal in other places on the Nevada test site besides Yucca Mountain and other environments that 
appear to be much more stable, it turns out, than Yucca Mountain and much less costly. That's very good. Now, you mentioned the politics. All I'll say in politics is what I see is there's really no support from the state, and that makes sense. No one really wants a nuclear depository, I think, in their backyard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, there are a lot of politics to deal with, but there's science, too, and that's, that's right. it's the science and the politics. That's right. Well, I thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the 17th. It'll be an interesting discussion. Good. Looking forward to it also. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. I have uh, Gary Dewart with me today. He is going to be speaking in support, and he's bringing a panel with him, too, to the RMC Republican Men's Club d- uh, lunch on the 17th of October. Uh, Gary, what are your points, and tell us a little bit about what you'll be speaking on. Well, our foundation was established in 2006, and uh, primarily the uh, interest of the foundation is to provide grassroots education about nuclear technology in general. Because for the past 50 years, it's been unfairly demonized by media and politics. We're trying to correct that by going directly to the grassroots people with our messaging systems and things like that. So what are the arguments for and against? What are your arguments for the actual nuclear depository at Yucca Mountain? The Yucca Mountain Repository, we've got about $10 billion invested into the initial uh, drill hole for the project itself. Our biggest concern is that the public understand that this repository has been studied by eight of the U.S. national laboratories, some uh, 100 universities and colleges throughout the country, Uh, and an untold number of uh, private corporations who've been working on the study. And because of this, it seems that politics is uh, is attracting more media attention than it is than the grassroots people having an understanding as to how much has gone into the study. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Um, I wanted to really go on and talk a bit about the speakers you're bringing in. Who are you bringing in to speak? A couple of people, one of them is on our advisory board, is, uh, is a guy named Bruce Marlowe. He spent 41 years with the Arriva Corporation out of France, uh, a major worldwide uh, nuclear power developer. Bruce has worked at every nuclear power plant in the United States of America, and many of them abroad as well. Uh, just a lots of hand-on experience uh, in those facilities. And he's one of our top uh, best advisors when it comes to these discussions. Second guy is Dr. Nicholas, Nicholas Sofonidis, a, an adjunct uh, pre- professor at the University of Nevada here in Reno. He also served on the, uh, with the American Nuclear Society as, uh, for a, a term as editor of uh, Nuclear Technology Today uh, for a year or two, something along that line. Very good. So now I'll let you go into politics a little bit. Kind of interesting. I wasn't aware of any politicians in the state who actually support this initiative to activate Yucca Mountain. In fact, um, the Obama administration really derailed it because it was law. I'm doing a little bit of reading. Apparently, the law is it was supposed to actually open this year, but it didn't happen. It's primarily because uh, Harry Reid, the Obama administration, uh, basically were able to stop the um, plant from going into produ- or into right. you know, storing the nuclear waste. Yes. The problem with that is that, and the people don't realize, that The law was passed uh, in 1982, and it was upgraded, I believe, or modified in 87. Congress passed the law by an excessive number of votes. I don't remember the numbers offhand. But they passed the law that Yucca Mountain in Nevada was the designated national site for, to uh, develop and build the repository for spent nuclear fuel. The derailment came because of the Reed connection to the Obama administration. And the derail did not change congressional law, which it should have done. It should have gone back to Congress and tried to update, change the law 
to make Nevada ineligible. But instead, they defunded the com completion of the Yucca Mountain full application study, which is legally, it, it's unfair. And that's why the courts decided to continue the, the funding process by forcing the, uh, the allegation of funds to the DOE so that the uh, functions could be completed. Now, Gary, just to finish up, and we'll go into more detail on the 17th at the Atlantis Casino, and it's a lunch for the RMC. Who are some of the people who support it here in the state? Who are their elected officials? Uh, there, there are several of them. Michelle Fiore, who is currently, I think, on the uh, uh, Las Vegas uh, City Council. Uh, she was a, an assembly person as well. Uh, Lisa Krasner uh, supports uh, the completion of the application process. Now, this is not building the facility, but it's, it's just uh, completing the study itself. Uh, and uh, Mark Amaday uh, has uh, stated that he's willing to discuss it. Uh, so there's, there's a few in Nevada that uh, I, I think uh, uh, Jim Settlemeyer, or I know Jim Wheeler has uh, also signed on to allowing the completion of the study. Very good. So the completion of the study. And then finally, who's opposed to it right now? Who's trying to stop it? Uh, our remaining congressional delegation, uh, um, uh, Senator Heller, uh, the, the, uh, I know, uh, uh, the, um, uh, was it, uh, Rosen or someone out, the other person in Congress there on the democratic side, they all oppose it because of the politics, mostly of Harry Reid. Uh, and all we're trying to do is get the grassroots people to understand that this really should be a science and engineering uh, decision over uh, uh, obstructive uh, political positions on it. So basically, Las Vegas, the, the business climate in Las Vegas may be opposed to it and funding some type of opposition. Yeah, it is, and I think wrongfully so. I think they misunderstand and mis really read the, the uh, capacity of uh, the Yucca Mountain facility. Uh, it's, a, it's the largest single um, work uh, prog uh, uh, pro project in the country. Uh, and uh, because of that, it would definitely change the entire economics of the state of Nevada. And I believe that the casino industry fears, fears that because they think that they may lose control instead of joining into the, the effort and, and working things out that would be beneficial for all aspects of the uh, Nevada industrial economy. So on October the 17th, everyone show up if you want to drill down further and learn more about Yucca Mountain, the pros and the cons. We're having two speakers there, and Gary and your team will be on one side, and uh, Scott Tyler from UNR, who's a hydrologist, will be speaking in opposition. Thanks, Gary, for this interview, and we look okay. forward to the 17th. Thank you. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead and, if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail. Go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV. And go over here, watch a couple more videos. Link to our website at republicanmenisclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.